Hi, my name is Alfonso Cantu, and welcome to the Mexican American document. <laughs> This is our first meeting of the original Barrio Boys Club. And this is a new location as far as breakfast is concerned. And I'd like to introduce to you the gentleman, the owner. Would you tell us your name, sir? My name is Joel Chiquetti, and I've just taken over Mucho Mexico for 2022. You have a breakfast menu here and yes, sir, all kinds of Mexican food. And do you don't have any menu by any yeah, chance? Yeah, we do. Yes. You do? Really? Well, that really makes it a Mexican restaurant. Yes. You can't sell menudo, you can't sell barbacoa. Pozole, pozole. And those are the things that they used to throw away at the meat markets here. Correct. But now, that's the number one food, like fajitas. Fajitas. Oh, we had really good They would carry that away. Now, it's the most expensive food that you can find in the market. Yes. To what I know, but maybe I'm wrong. But anyway, and they, we also serve cabrito. Say a little something. Talk about your place. <laughs> cabrito. Well, I'm going to let Danny talk about the menu and all the features we have with the soups and seafoods and oyster bar. We have made fresh micheladas, margaritas, good tequila, papas con huevo, huevo con chorizo, chilaquiles, good ceviche, cocktails, with everything, the soup, whatever you want, man, we can do it. So uh, we come up at 10 in the morning. Uh, we close at uh, 10.30, Monday to Thursday, Friday and Saturday we close middle night. Good service, good service, good food, and good owner. <laughs> we can do it. Okay, here we are again. We're interviewing one of my brothers from the Barrio Boys Club, the Colonia Villa, a neighborhood where we were raised at, and we are the last of the baby boomers. And, right. and here he is. Let him tell you how he ended up over here and what are we doing here. Mission. Okay, like Poncho said, originally from uh, La Colonia Villa, my dad uh, settled there many years before I was born, and he, in those days they, they would build their own houses, and uh, that uh, neighborhood was named after uh, more or less Pancho Villa because a lot of the people that fought with Villa settled in that neighborhood, and so they named it La Colonia Villa. And uh, it's off of Liberty Road, Ralston and Russell, and uh, I was ra raised there. Later on, I, uh, we moved to Northside, which uh, that's where we went to school, at Marshall and Jeff Davis. And from there, after graduating, we went on to uh, work for the uh, railroad, where John and a bunch of other of us uh, worked there. John worked over 30 years. I worked over 40 years. So we were uh, happily married. Uh, we've got uh, two sons and a bunch of grandchildren and we're just enjoying this good retirement life that we have now and good health, thank God. So I just want to thank uh, the good Lord for all his blessings and, uh, and everything that has happened to us. So we want to thank you, Raymond, for being with us. Thank you. Diana. And may thank you. the Lord be with you until we meet again. Until we meet again. Thank, thank you, you very much, much. Thank you. everyone. Okay, here we are again now. We have two other members of the Barrio Boys Club. And I'm going to let them tell you what their names are. I don't know what they are, but I ain't going to tell them. Here you go. What is your name, sir? Uh, Michael Castillo. Okay. Michael. I'm, I'm from uh, Colonia Villa. Raised up there in the 50s and 60s. Okay. And uh, I've just been a member for, for two years now okay, of the Body good. Boys. And my name is Augustine Castillo. I'm a few years older than uh, my brother Mike. And I grew up on Russell and Wiley. We moved, that's where we grew and our parents are from uh, my aunts and cousins lived in Colonia Villa and Second Ward and Northside. But here, here with this group here, I get to meet all these guys that I, and their families. We all grew up together. Our parents and grandparents are from uh, North Main, San Jacinto, yeah. the old downtown from 120 years, 150 years ago. Okay. All of McKee Street uh, from uh, the bayous. Uh, from downtown, everybody north and east, at Second Ward. Right. And then you go to Houston Avenue, and you got mm. my mom's side of the family. My dad's on the east side. On the east side. And then uh, we all uh, outgrew the neighborhoods, but then we moved up to Colonia Villa. We moved up to Crisol. We moved right. to the suburbs. You know? Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of that was due to the, they were moving our, our, our people out of the, 
downtown area for yes, expansion. Yes. So the yes. freeway moved everybody out. Yes, that yeah. is correct. There were no freeways when I was a kid. Yeah. When you were a kid, there were no freeways. Fifty nine was the first one that tore everything up, and that was neighborhood between the north side and Fifth Ward and close to Second yeah. Ward. It's all in there. All that got tore down, and there's all freeways. You know, earlier you brought up something about. They're calling us Hispanics or Latinos and stuff. Yes. They, they have, there's a hard time identifying us and who we are. I filled out an application the other day. Okay. It, it was, it was had, had whites, uh -huh. had Latinos, or, okay. or they, they had black, Hispanic. and then they had Asian, they had Native Americans. But I couldn't, I couldn't hit on anyone because well, I'm, right. not, I'm not white, I'm not, I'm not black, right. I'm not Asian. And you're not Hispanic? And, the, the Hispanic was like an <laughs> ethnic kind of thing, but. I, I, you know, I said, okay, now what spot do I hit? So, yeah. so they don't know what spot to hit because right, right. it's it's different for here in Texas compared to what Florida is. You've got right. uh, Puerto Ricans, and you've got Cubans, yes, and yes. you know people well, from other other Latinos. sections. Right, right. That doesn't and, make and sense. We're to so me. different. Now, what else do you have to say about the club? I I, I tell you what, it, it's uh, very helpful. Uh, the leaders, the leaders they have here, are uh, unifiers, and they bring people, politicians in. They bring. Yeah. Uh, uh, help people in right. to, to help yes. most of the guys here are are older than 60 so uh, plus it, it unifies our group yeah, and uh, our, I guess our, our our society and kind of a lost society because a lot of us grew up under the same same uh, uh, area but we got older guys that really had it rough compared oh, yeah. to me oh yeah uh, th these guys that are 10 15 years older than me had I mean they really had hardships they wouldn't hire them they, they were restricted from hiring at any of these refineries they couldn't be police officers firefighters they were restricted in what their what their career path was yes and, uh, we were, sports we were considered second-class citizens like the black people because in our neighborhood, yeah. the blacks were they, they were had it yeah. harder. We're yeah. the minorities. The, so black, yeah. the black yeah. people had it much harder. Yes. Yeah, we fall under the same Jim Crow laws, laws that were right. 50 years ago, 60 right. years ago, 70 yeah. years ago. Together. You know what makes it difficult that the blacks, we went to school with the whites because we were classified as Hispanic. But we're, we're not classified as white, but we're not. We're, uh, we're used as a buffer. Yes, exactly. We're used as a buffer. So therefore, so we have enemies in the black community thinking that we are like Com competition. Those are, yeah. the, those are the new people. The old people yeah. know how hard it was. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, what we're talking about is history anyway, you know, and we're making history as we speak. Okay, now I Thank guess you. that's about it for today. Thank you, Thank you guys. Thank you, guys. <laughs>